What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at switches for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at switches, but before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at switches with Kivi so we can do it off and on. We can change the text whenever we do it or do whatever we want. Before we get started though, I've got a couple of really quick announcements. So yesterday was my birthday, born on Valentine's Day, very fun. And so as a special thank you to all of you guys on my birthday, I wanted to offer a crazy massive discount for my Udemy courses. So if you come over to johnelder.com forward slash Udemy, you can see a list of all my Udemy courses. And if you click on any of these, you'll go to Udemy with a coupon code applied and you'll get any of these courses for either $9.99 up to like $11.99. That's as low as it'll let me do. I don't have any sort of ability to price these individually. Udemy sort of picks for me, but I've sort of instructed them to make it as low as possible. So most of these will be $9.99 each. Uh, some of them might be $10.99 or $11.99, but for the most part, $9.99. So this sales for the next three days special birthday sale. And so check that out if you're interested. The other quick announcement I have is over the weekend, I started a second YouTube channel for my hiking. A lot of you guys know I do a lot of hiking on the weekend. So I've got this first video that I just posted, North Peak. I'll put a link to this in the description below if you want to check that out. I'd appreciate it if you watched it, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing what I get up to on the weekends. You can see it's pretty cool. There's lots of awesome views to see. And so check that out. So back to the coding like i said in this video we're going to learn how to use switches uh, that's a useful thing we can switch it on we can switch it off and i've got this text just changing to on and off you could do it absolutely anything whenever the switch is switched and i'll show you how to do that so i've got two files here switch.py and switch.kv it's our basic kivi starter code that we always have i'm using the sublime text editor and the git bash terminal as always and you can find the code for this in the comment section below as well as a link to the playlist with like 40 other kivi videos if you're interested in checking those out so, okay, we've got our switch.kv file sort of named in our builder. And so let's head over here. I've got a basic box layout like we always have. It's set to vertical orientation. I've got the root width and root height set so that it expands out to the entire size of the app. So let's come down here and let's just create a quick label. And we need to give this an ID. I'm just going to call this my underscore label because we want to update this label later on. So we need an ID to identify it. Uh, let's just give this a quick font underscore size of like 32 to make the font bigger. And let's give it a text of uh, the switch is on. Okay, so basic label. So to create a switch, we just call a switch. And we can determine whether it's on or off by default by calling active. So I'm going to call active true. This means the switch will be switched to on by default. So if we click it, it'll go to off, right? So if you wanted the opposite of that, if you wanted it to be off by default, you would put false there. And we'll play around with this in a second so you can see that. We can also give this a font size if we want. I don't know that this will do anything, but that's fun. And so in order to make this do something, we have to call an on underscore active. So when this is active, it means we've clicked on it, right? So let's call a root dot switch underscore click. And this is gonna be a function, we'll create this in just a second. And inside of here, we wanna pass self, and we also wanna pass self.active, right? Because this is on active. Self.active will pass a couple of things back into our Python file, and we'll look at that in just a second. So, okay, this looks good. So now we need to create this switch underscore click function. So let's head back over to our Python file, and in our my layout widget here, our main class, we can just define switch click, and we wanna pass self, and we also wanna pass two other things. We wanna pass the switch object, that's the switch itself, and we also wanna pass the switch value. So let's just print out the switch value. So whenever we click on the switch, this is gonna pass the switch itself, which is the switch object, which is not that useful, but we still have to sort of pass it. And we also want to pass the switch value. Let's see what this switch value is. So let's go ahead and save this. Head over to our terminal here and run Python switch.py. And when we do, it says the switch is on. We get a little switch here. When we click on it, it goes to off. Nothing seems to happen. But if we click here, if we close it, 
we can see it passes false to the terminal. If we run this again, we click it, it just passed false. We click it again, we can assume it passes true. Let's see, false, true. So that's what's getting passed by that switch value, right? So if we wanna see what the switch object is, it's just the switch itself. This is gonna throw just a big like address in memory. It's not gonna be all that useful, but we can run it real quick and see what happens at least. So we click this, close it. You can see it's passing this, it's just a memory like address thing. That's not that useful, it's an object. So we don't really care about that, but it's interesting to kind of look at. So let's get rid of this. So we know that our switch, if it gets clicked to off, it'll be false. If it's clicked to on, it'll be true. So we can run just a basic if statement and say, hey, if this value, which means if it's true, then do something, All right? Well, what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna go self.ids.mindscorelabel.text now let's set this equal to something and say, let's say you clicked the switch on, right? So if it's true, it means we've clicked the switch on. We just determined that by looking at the terminal. So we could do anything we want in here. I'm just gonna change the label because eh, it's just a basic example here. Else we can do anything else we want. So if it's not true, that means it's false, right? So false means off, exclamation point, right? So that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. So we got the switches on, we click it, boom, you click the switch off. You can see down here, it's sort of off. It's it's kind of grayed itself out a little bit. We can click it again, boom, your switch is on, and we can toggle back and forth as, as often as we want. And that's really all there is to it. So by default, if we run this guy one more time, we can see that the switch is on. Right, so we could change that default behavior if we want, like I mentioned earlier. So let's pull back our Kivi file and we can say the active is true. We can set that to false. So if we save this and run it, it should be unclicked or set to off by default. And it is, now it's off. Again, we can click it, turn it back on and the behavior stays the same. It's just off by default by changing that to false. Let me turn this back to true. There's one more thing we could play with. We can go disabled and set that to true. And this will make the whole thing disabled by default. It'll still be on the screen, but you can see now it's disabled. The whole thing is grayed out. If I click on it, I'm clicking on it. You can't really tell, but I am. And nothing's happening, so it's just completely disabled. So there may be a situation where you want your switch disabled and then something else happens in the app and you can re-enable it. If you want to re-enable it after it's been disabled, we just change this back to false. And you can do that programmatically if you want in sort of the normal way. So boom, if we wanted to do that programmatically, how would we do that? Well, let's give it a try. So let's give this an ID of my underscore switch. Now we can access all the things in here, right? So if we save this, head back over here. So if we click this off, we'll change the text to say, you click the switch to off, but we could also go self.ids.myswitch.disabled and set that equal to true, All right? So let's go ahead and run this. And we see the switch is on, we click off, boom, it says the switch is off and now it's been completely disabled, right? And we can't, we can't switch it again. Everything's grayed out, I'm clicking on it, you can't tell, but I am, and uh, nothing's happening, so it's been disabled. So that's how you can disable it programmatically. You can do the same thing to enable it somewhere else, obviously, right, not here because we can't click on it anymore. Uh, but if you wanted to, let me just comment this out. You know, you could have another button somewhere else in your app. If you clicked on that, it re-enables it. You would just set self.ids.myswitch.disabled to false, and that would re-enable it. So that switches with Kivi. Pretty simple and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It may just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodingMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.